Hi and a very good evening to all of you. Welcome back to our daily current affairs session for today. Guys, I know that the session yesterday was a bit longer than usual, right? But uh, you know, having a little additional extra uh, or an additional or an extra information, it does no harm, right? Uh, sometimes in the long run also and as well as in the EMCQ, Somehow having an additional background knowledge helps you eliminate the answers, eliminate the options better. Kabi kabi aisa hota hai MCQ mein, you cannot figure out what the correct answer is. But if you have some background knowledge, even minutely related to the topic, you may be able to eliminate the correct option, right? Or you may be able to eliminate the wrong option and choose the correct answer, right? So. You know, still care will be taken that the video length is shorter. But again, I'm telling you, a little background, a little extra knowledge will, you know, only be helpful to you in the long run. All right. So before we start with today's session, before we start with today's session, let me cover some important and an interesting current affairs topic uh, with all of you that comes under your books and authors section of your general awareness syllabus. Right. I hope you organize your notes this way, right? Uh, separate plea for books and authors and international news, everything. Anyway, our PDFs are also very well organized, right? Your PDFs are uh, the daily current affair PowerPoint at least is shared with you all in our Telegram channel. All right. So do find the link of our Telegram channel in the description below. Okay. So. Also check out our crash course for RBI grade B exam. There is still time, right? There is still time. You can gauge the level of your preparation. If you sir ka video, dekhenge, maybe you will get an idea of whether you are going in the right direction or not, right? Right now is the right time to, you know, you still have that time to make the right decision, right? To correct your mistake. If you're going in the wrong direction, right now is the time you can still you know, channelize your preparation in the right direction and you can always use our RBI grade B crash course, right? It is opened uh, before the RBI exam. You can always take help of this crash course and ensure sure shot selection to the phase one as well as phase two. All right. And also you can download our app for from Google Play Store to, you know, get access to all the relevant study material and everything, all the relevant exam in related information. All right. So before we start with today's MCQs, this is actually a very interesting and a very important inauguration session, right? You cannot probably you cannot see the name of the book, right? The name of the book that has been launched by the Union Minister of Education, Sri Dharmendra Pradhan, he inaugurated uh, recently, a book uh, on Mirz Bhagwan Birsa Munda, right? All the tribals in Jharkhand, they consider him as Bhagwan, right? He is Bhagwan Mirsa Munda. Basically, he was a tribal leader, right? He led very important tribal movements. We will see a few facts quickly related to him. But first, let's uh, check out the name of the book. The name of the book is Birsa Munda Janjatiya Nayak, right? Birsa Munda Janjatiya Nayak is the name of the book that has been inaugurated by uh, Union Minister of Education Sri Dharmendra Pradhan. The author of the book, the author of the book is Professor Alok Chakrawal, right? It is authored by Professor Alok Chakrawal, right? Professor Alok Chakrawal authored Birsa Munda Janjatiya Nayak, right? Professor is a vice chancellor. He is the vice chancellor of Guru Ghasidas Vishwadyalay in Bilaspur. All right. So this book is, why is this important? This is important. Why? Because it is a book. It is a book on one of the very important, one of the most important tribal leaders related to our national movement. All right. So it is actually a comprehensive attempt to bring to the fore the struggles of uh, Birsa Munda and the contribution of forest dwellers that eventually culminated into the freedom movement, right? Let's not discuss modern history right now. But these are some facts that are very, very important, right? They can be asked, they can be asked in the RBI exam. So just 
let's have a very quick look at those facts right before we move on to our mcqs today right birsa munda he was a tribal leader right key important some very important movement was uh, that uh, he carried on this ul gulan ul gulan movement इन्होंने जो मूवमेंट ट्राइबल मूवमेंट लॉन्च किया था इट वाज नोन एज उलगुलान ट्राइबल मूवमेंट राइट दैट वाज अगेंस्ट द ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट लैंड बाय द ब्रिटिश राइट हु दे कंसीडर्ड एज फॉरेनर्स व्हिच एक्चुअली दे वर बट अगेन ही वांटेड टू यू नो प्रोटेक्ट ट्राइबल राइट्स राइट ही आल्सो वांटेड टू रिफॉर्म द ट्राइबल सोसाइटी ऑन अ होल राइट ही स्टार्टेड ऑफ द रिलीजन नेम्ड बिरसायत ओके सो दीज आर सम टू इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स मूवमेंट का नाम था उलगुलान राइट ट्राइबल रिफॉर्म मूवमेंट का नाम था बिरसायत इट वॉज एक्चुअली अ सॉर्ट ऑफ अ रिलीजन अ सॉर्ट ऑफ अ पाथ टू अ बेटर ट्राइबल लाइफ राइट सो दैट इज वाई ही इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट रिवर्ड ट्राइबल लीडर इन झारखंड राइट इवन द स्टेट ऑफ झारखंड वॉज फॉर्मड इन हिज रेवरेंस All right, so he is also known as Dharti Abba or Earth of the Father. This definitely can be asked in some way or the other in your exam. Okay, so do make sure, do make a note of these small facts, right? So let's move on uh, with the MCQs for the day. Let's move on with the MCQs for the day. We have which of the following institute is a part is participating in Indo-Finnish virtual network center on quantum computing from india all right so quantum computing when you uh, you know listen to this term known as quantum computing bahut simplified language mein let me explain it to you what is the difference between your conventional computing your uh, pcs right your smartphones your laptops whatever you use that is your conventional computing and quantum computing these are two different things right number 1 not number 1 but actually the key difference is that conventional computing mein ek bit hota hai right you all must be aware of that binary bit right it can attain only one value it can either be zero or it can either be one right quantum computing basically quantum se aap kya samajhte ho quantum is actually a sub atomic particle right it tries to uh, you know harness the property of the photon which is a sub सब अटोमिक पार्टिकल की एक प्रॉपर्टी को वो यूटिलाइज करता है राइट द प्रॉपर्टी इज दैट द पार्टिकल कैन अटेन बोथ द स्टेट राइट इट कैन बी जीरो एंड वन एट द सेम टाइम देर इज नो हार्ड एंड फास्ट रूल दैट द पार्टिकल इज जीरो और पार्टिकल इज वन इट कैन बी जीरो और वन एट द सेम टाइम और और भी ज्यादा सिंप्लीफाइड लैंग्वेज में अगर आपको बताऊं तो क्वांटम कंप्यूटिंग इज बेस्ड बेसिकली बेस्ड ऑन क्यू राइट This is your binary system in conventional computing and quantum computing. Me qubits use hota hai. This is a simple overview of what basically quantum computing is, right? Now, now the question is asking you, कौन से participating uh, Indo-Finnish uh, which institutes are participating in in this Indo-Finnish virtual network on quantum computing? So the correct answer is. I I S R Pune and I I T Madras. All right, these two, right? Along with C D A C D A, just के बारे में हम लोगों ने कल discuss किया था regarding supercomputing, right? In yesterday's uh, session, we discussed about C D A. We discussed about supercomputing, and now you have a question on quantum computing. So you know this is how we relate to knowledge, right? अगर यहाँ पे ऑप्शन में सी डैक आता तो यू वुड हैव बीन इजीली बीन एबल टू एलिमिनेट एंड मार्क इट एज द करेक्ट आंसर व्हाई बिकॉज द वेरी रीजन फॉर द एस्टेब्लिशमेंट ऑफ सी डैक वाज सुपर कंप्यूटिंग राइट सो हियर द ऑप्शन इज नॉट देयर बट जस्ट इन केस इट इज देयर इन द एक्चुअल एग्जाम यू विल बी एबल टू एलिमिनेट इट राइट द करेक्ट आंसर हियर इज बोथ ए एंड बी और राइट लेट्स लुक इन वॉट actually this summit is all about so basically iit madras icer pune and cdac pune will participate in this virtual network on quantum computing theek hai na indo finnish virtual network center on quantum computing will stimulate innovative research and development projects to address the needs of both the nations all right so this 
is actually just a pictorial representation of what just I explained. You all know, you all should also know uh, that in budget 2020, in budget 2020, India made a provision, uh, India set out a budgetary outlay of rupees 8,000 crore, uh, right, under national mission on quantum technology and its application, right. Why this quantum technology is also very, very important for India is because countries like China, they are also using, you know, quantum crypto technology also. Recently, uh, a few years ago, in fact, China sent a satellite to space, right? It made a first phone call back to China using the quantum computing technology, right? There are so many advantages, strategic advantages, right? Technological and economic advantages over quantum computing. And today in India, mein, quantum computing is, uh, you know, only it remains to be a uh, skill esoteric skill right only people who uh, are you know well bred in computers well skilled with computers are able to operate on quantum computers not people like you or me right we own still operate on conventional computing systems so this is quite important right do have a look at it now we have we have this question we have this question on Mauritius Prime Minister Pravind Kumar Jugnath. Pravind Kumar Jugnath, he came to India. He is on an 8D visit to India, right? Though agreement, other than many other agreements that were signed between India and Mauritius, of them, two agreements were signed, including a line of credit, right, to Mauritius for Metro Express and other infrastructure. Right, Metro Express and other infrastructure ki line of credit sign hua between India and Mauritius. Right, so the correct answer, first answer, uh, these are the options. 101 million dollars, 190 million dollars, 180, 167, 155. Right, the correct answer here is 190 million dollars worth line of credit was given to Mauritius by India. Right, Mauritius is is an island nation, right? The capital is Port Louis. Its currency is Mauritian rupee. ठीक है? तो एक line of credit uh, sign हुआ है. India is extending a line of credit worth 190 million dollars to Mauritius for Metro Express and other infrastructure projects. All right, Mauritius recently became a member of Colombo Security Conclave. Right, which is a grouping of India, Sri Lanka, and Maldives. That basically, you know, as the name suggests, Colombo Security Conclave, it basically aims to, you know, protect and uh, restore the regional security in the region. All right, in this, in the Indian Ocean region. All right. So, ye Mauritius Prime Minister Pravind Kumar uh, Jugnath has come to India on an eight-day visit. This is the news. Okay. So, <clears throat> he will participate with Modi on groundbreaking ceremony. Also, uh, he will also participate in a groundbreaking ceremony of WHO Global Center for Traditional Medicine, right? So, Global Center for Traditional Medicine is being set up by the World Health Organization in the Jamnagar district of Gujarat, where the uh, pres uh, Prime Minister of Mauritius will also be participating in the summit. All right. So India, Mauritius was one of the first uh, beneficiaries of India's neighborhood policies. All right. If you uh, look at this graph, if you look, look at this graph, you can see that Mauritius is one of the key contributors to the foreign direct investment in India. Right. Right after you, uh, Singapore and US and maybe 2022 ke hi figures. Hai, right. Back in the year 2021, FATF removed Mauritius from its grey list, right? Uh, after which the FDI, you know, restored to the old levels. Isse pehle, before that, Mauritius was the second largest, uh, you know, source of FDI in India. All right. So this is just some important news. You should know about it, right? One ninety million dollar line of credit was extended to Mauritius for the Metro Express and other infrastructure projects, all right? And there also there was an MOU signed on implementation of small development projects, okay? So these are some important uh, 
projects also earlier this year in january in the month of january a 45 million dollar social housing project was signed between india and mauritius right you should know about it a 45 million dollar a 45 million dollar social housing infrastructure project signed between india and mauritius that aimed at launching 956 units of homes right that are totally run by solar power generation right solar power network right and a lot of other a lot of other initiatives were signed between india and mauritius right to provide 200 million dollar aid for a metro rail right and other infrastructure projects in mauritius so this was a very very important uh, news uh, mcq for today we shall cover more about it right we shall cover more about it as the news gets updated right they also 200 million sorry 190 million dollar ka ye agreement sign hua hai ye to aap dhyan mein rakh lijiye right the president of mauritius the president of mauritius is mr prithvi raj mr prithvi raj singh rupan right mr prithvi raj singh Rupan is the president of Mauritius. Okay, so these are some facts, right? Jugnath will also travel to Gujarat and Varanasi apart from New Delhi. So we 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 will cover this, uh, you know, whenever that we have the updates for the visit about the visit, right? So. Moving on to the next question, we have in April 2022, Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji he visited the Vidya Samiksha Kendra, a command and control center for schools in where is the place, right? So the Vidya uh, Samiksha Center Kendra is a command and control center for school, right? As the name suggests, it is a technology-driven smart school, state-of-the-art school that can serve as a model. for rest of the other schools in the entire country all right so vidya samiksha kendra kahan pe situated hai kahan pe located hai first answer this question so that we can move on to the explanation right so vidya samiksha kendra is situated in gandhinagar and uh, modi ji visited this state of the art school the state of the art school on his visit to gandhinagar right along with this along with this he also visited banas dairy sankul cheese and whey plant in banas kantha district of gujarat right banas kantha district we have also discussed about it it, it is in the uh, i guess northwest region of gujarat where and it is uh, you know banas river flows through this district that is why it is known as banas kantha district it is quite important and popular all right so this banas uh, dairy sankul cheese and whey plant is also related for the expansion of dairy right and empowering women in farming right also it proves that farmers can also have other sources of income other than just you know harvesting okay so dairy also includes gobar gas plants the dairy also has inbuilt gobar gas plants which adds on to government of india's initiatives of uh, waste to wealth that is kachde se kanchan right so gobar gas plant is very very important right banas kantha district of gujarat now let's talk about vidya samiksha kendra vidya samiksha kendra basically a state of the art school hai right basically it tracks enrollment attendance learning outcome drop out rates ye sare factors wo track karta hai digital record rakhta hai right and it also it is also established under the national digital education architecture framework right national digital एजुकेशन एंड आर्किटेक्चर फ्रेमवर्क के अंदर ये विद्या समीक्षा केंद्र स्टैब्लिश किया गया है और राइट विच विल ट्रैक ऑल दीज पैरामीटर्स दैट वी जस्ट डिस्कस्ड वाई लगो और राइट डिजिटली एंड इट कैन ऑफर यू नो इट कैन इंस्पायर इट कैन बी अ मॉडल स्कूल इट कैन बी अ रोल मॉडल फॉर अदर स्कूल इन द कंट्री टू वर्क एंड फंक्शन इन द सेम वे और राइट सो दीज आर टू इंपॉर्टेंट 
terms that were in news today all right so what is the name of the world's first covid-19 diagno diagnostic test that detects sars cov-2 infection through breath all right world's first covid-19 d test it launch hua hai that can test whether a person is covid positive or not only by analyzing the breath right we will discuss what kind of technology we it uses so that you are able to remember it better all right like jaise breathalyzers hote hain that are used to detect whether a person is drinking and driving or not all right isi tarah ye covid ka breath first breathalyzer has been launched which which brand has launched it right you have to name you have to name you have to actually uh, write the name of the breathalyzer which is inspect ir covid 19 breathalyzer okay inspect ir covid 19 breathalyzer which is uh, us food and drug administration has authorized the emergency use of inspect ir covid 19 breathalyzer all right it is world's first covid 19 d test that detects sars cov 2 infection through breath right it has been developed by inspect ir systems theek hai so basically iska concept kya hai usually uh, us food and drug administration already has technologies to check whether a food is contaminated or not right we already have a lot of technology jab hum log dusre planets ke atmospheric composition ko jab hum assess kar sakte hain to why can't we detect uh you know the infection rate using the breath of a person we already have technology that detects whether a person is committing the crime of drinking and driving or not all right so isi tarah gas chromatography mass spectrometry jaisi bhare bhari terms hain but these are nothing these are nothing but a simple technology that analyzes the composition of a person's breath right the chemical composition of a person's breath right maybe tests the infection load all right so all these technologies are used they have been put to good use and uh, inspect ir breathalyzer to detect covid-19 was launched by us fda all right now let's see what india comes up with okay so we have the next question which company has partnered with mastercard to launch world's first क्रिप्टो बैक पेमेंट कार्ड वर्ल्ड का फर्स्ट क्रिप्टो बैक पेमेंट कार्ड कौन से कंपनी ने लॉन्च किया है इन कोलैबोरेशन विद मास्टर कार्ड राइट इन कोलैबोरेशन विद मास्टर कार्ड सो द करेक्ट आंसर हियर इज नेक्सो नेक्सो इज अ ब्रांड दैट हैज कोलैबोरेटेड विद मास्टर कार्ड टू लॉन्च फॉर वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट क्रिप्टो बैक पेमेंट कार्ड राइट तो क्रिप्टो करेंसी बेसिकली क्या होता है we have already discussed at length about cryptocurrency in one of your previous current affairs videos we can also discuss it again right in short cryptocurrency is actually a bitcoin right a bitcoin that is based on blockchain technology okay blockchain technology you all know it is an online ledger system right so every bitcoin is unique because it has its own unique mathematical algorithm known as hash right and these bitcoins are actually in uh, financial language in financial parlance these are known as cryptocurrency theek hai cryptocurrency you all know is highly volatile to market fluctuations right it can rise up to 5 times and fall up to 10 times overnight it is highly volatile and it is not backed by a central authority it is an open online ledger system that is how it works right सो इन्हीं सारी एडवांटेजेस को यूज करते हुए नेक्सो ने मास्टर कार्ड के साथ कोलैबोरेट करके वर्ल्ड का फर्स्ट क्रिप्टो बैक पेमेंट कार्ड लॉन्च किया है दैट इज फार मोर बेनिफिशियल एंड मच मोर एडवांटेजेस टू द रेगुलर कन्वेंशनल क्रेडिट कार्ड्स दैट वी यूज इन दैट कि इस पेमेंट कार्ड में देर इज नो मैक्सिमम लिमिट अप टू विच अ कंज्यूमर कैन विदड्रॉ समथिंग विदड्रॉ एन अमाउंट all right so these are some benefits right it is much more safe and secure than regular credit cards right there is no breach of data privacy there are no fixed monthly payments these are some of the advantages that we can discuss also mr raj dhamodran mr raj 
Dhamodaran is the Mastercard's head of uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain products and partnership, right? He is the Mastercard's head of um, he is the head of the Mastercard's division, right? Mastercard's division of partnerships on cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies. Okay. So moving on to the next slide. We have which has become India's first fintech led NBFC factor to receive the certificate of registration under registration of factors RPI 2022. So nine regulations ke under nine regulations ke under which has become India's first fintech to uh, you know get a, a certificate of registration under these new rules right answer answer the correct uh, mark the correct option quickly so that we can move on to the explanation the correct answer here is one to one finance one to one finance is the correct answer here which has become india's first fintech led nbfc factor to receive the certificate of registration under registration of factor regulations 2022 of rbi right it will offer factoring services digitally to businesses especially msmes for meeting their short term liquidity requirements so basically what is factoring factoring hota kya suppose an msme makes a bulk transaction of 2 lakh rupees so uska invoice invoice will be there with an msme right so basically what will that msme do suppose that unit is facing a short term ca cash crunch and that unit is not able to uh, you know pay their credit dues in, in a very short span of time right either the person pays the credit dues of 2 lakh in the short span of time then the msme will face a liquidity crunch to carry on its regular operations so basically the invoice will be sold out to a third party right that third party will uh, you know grace the invoices that is make the due payments of against these invoices on behalf of that msme on a condition that the msme can pay that uh, you know amount that credit amount to the third party on a timely basis right a tailor made scheme for every msme so basically that is what factoring is right selling your insurance to a uh, selling your loan to a third party which is also known as refinancing but that is for a large scale right so factoring services may one to one one to one finance will be will become india's first finance tech nbfc factor right it is a non banking finance company it will offer factoring services to msmes right aise aap yaad karo it is a non banking it is an nbfc it will offer financing factoring services to msmes all right and a third it is based on financial technology right so when you understand what factoring is it is much easy to remember the term right remember the news right so which is the nbfc concerned it is one to one finance right it has also operated in gem sahai gem sahai is an online application of uh, government uh, e procurement right government e marketplace ka ek online uh, application hai gem sahai where top lenders in the country they use this application to fund the party members and msmes that are you know involved with it right so this is gem sahai it offers loans usually to msmes right or to any any enterprise who wants to avail a loan free of cost right there is no fee involved in loans that are transferred through gem sahai portal only and only the rate of interest and the amount of loan is repayable to the lender right even registering registering a, a firm under this portal is also free of cost right so it is a very very nice initiative to help msmes solve their liquidity crunch and one to one finance is one of the key contributors of this gem sahai portal now it has also been registered as a, a factoring nbfc factoring service right and the founder and ceo of one to one finances dr ravi modani okay very very important and very nice mcq 
you all should take a screenshot of it <coughs> okay what according to the world bank's working paper titled poverty in india has declined over the last decade but not as much as previously thought this is actually a entire title of a paper published by world bank quite long but just remember not as much as previously thought right so extreme poverty in india is estimated to have declined by how much between 2011 to 19 right answer the correct question mark the correct option the correct option here is 12.3 percent 12 point india's poverty extreme poverty is estimated to have been declined by 12.3 percent between this time gap okay so world bank policy research has released the working paper poverty in india declined but not as much as previously thought as the title suggest that poverty in india has declined exponentially right it has declined from 22.5 percent in 2011 to just 10.2 percent in 2019 right which is a very very important very nice achievement okay let's look deep into it let's learn more about it world bank living in extreme poverty ko kaise define karta hai living in extreme a person is living in extreme poverty in india if he or she is earning le 145 or less than 145 in a day ek tarike ki ye poverty line ho gayi as per the 2022 estimate all right reduction level was more than pronounced in rural areas now this is also very nice that reduction rural poverty has also reduced to a great extent but urban poverty has not reduced that much it has only reduced to the extent of 7.9% all right real income of the farmers with the smallest land holding have also increased by 10% right as comparison to 2% increase in farmers for uh, income with large land holdings right so in short it implies that real income of the farmers have also increased by 10% okay author of the paper or author of this paper published by world bank or economist sutirtha sinha roy and roy van der weyd okay isi tarah isko add on karne ke liye imf ne bhi apni ek remote uh, report publish kari thi that went on to say that india that suggested that the extreme poverty in india was as low as 0.8% in 2019 it praised pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana for preventing extreme poverty by providing food grains to uh, the poor during the pandemic all right so we have Uh, videos on government schemes all right you can check details about pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana in our youtube playlist videos or uh, where we are covering extensively covering all the important government schemes that are meant for rbi exam okay so poverty ki when we are talking about poverty there are some facts right there are some facts which you should know which you should actually ideally know ye bahut hi basic bahut zyada general knowledge hai that is why i'm sharing this extra information with you all over here you can take a screenshot if you want some key facts related to poverty in india india ki pehli poverty line was given out by uh, dada bhai nauro ji right he gave its first estimate of poverty line in india in his book poverty and unbritish rule in india all right the estimate was between 16 to 35% per person per year right 16 to 35% per person per year was the poverty estimate in the pre independence era given by dada bhai naro ji after independence many important committees came up to assess poverty to give out poverty lines to offer solutions uh, to poverty in india some of the most important committees are alag committee 
Lakwadala Committee, Tendulkar Committee and Rangarajan Committee of which the Rangarajan Committee report of 2014 uh, gave its poverty line estimate as monthly per capita expenditure, monthly per capita expenditure to be rupees 1407 in urban areas and 972 in rural areas. Okay, this is the index hai by Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. In collaboration with UNDP, they have also launched multi-dimensional poverty index. Right? Multi-dimensional poverty index may as on 2022, India ranked 66 among 109 countries. Okay, so these were some important facts related to poverty in India. Now let's, uh, you know, quickly cover this additional news. What is the global GDP forecast for the year of financial year 2023 by the World Bank? Right, global GDP forecast, not India, but global Okay, so the World Bank has reduced the global GDP forecast to 3.2%. Okay, the global GDP forecast has been reduced to 3.2% by the World Bank in its current estimate. And India's global GDP growth rate remains to be 8%. Okay, so moving on to the next question. Who is the first female president of Tanzania? Tanzania, you know, a nation in South in African continent, Tanzania. Ki pehli female president kaun bani hai? Answer it quickly. Samia Suluhu Hassan is, has been appointed as the first female president in Tanzania. Right? Let's check out some details. Samia Suluhu Hassan, okay. She is the first female president of Tanzania and also the third female head of government in Africa, in an African nation in East Africa. Okay, prior to her, Agatha, okay, whatever you guys pronounce it, right? She was the prime minister of Rwanda and acting president, right? And Sylvie Kinigi was the president of Burundi. Okay, so this becomes a very, very important news because after a gap of these many years in East Africa, there is there has been a first female head of government, right? Remember the name Samia Suluhu Hassan from Tanzania. Okay, which bank has been awarded the, the Global Sealant Model Bank under the category Payment System Transformation for its Enterprise Payments Hub, right? Which bank has been given this award? Answer the question. The correct answer here is Indusind Bank. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Sorry, ICICI Bank, not Indusind Bank, has been awarded Sealant Model Bank Award, right? Under Payment System Transformation and Enterprise. Hub and ICICI Bank has been awarded Small Business Digital Banking. Okay, overall winner is Teachers Federal Credit Union, which is based in the US. We will discuss more details about this in the upcoming sessions. Okay, let's just... Okay, this was the very last question. Okay, so thank you so much for watching today's video. Alright, see you guys in the next session. Prepare well, study hard. Take care and bye-bye.